Beep, 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 beep. Morning all, how are we doing? Afternoon, evening, welcome, wherever you are in the world, to the court of the EDI Jester. As you can see, I'm still here, firmly as constant in my man cave. And what have I got for you today? Well, October cohort for the Warrior Teachers, I'm going to be pushing this along. So if you're fed up of hearing it, I'm sorry, right? But we got, come on, come and join us. Come and join the team, we need more, more good folks who are willing to come on board and, uh, yeah, fight the good fight, as they say. There's that, buy me coffee, usual stuff, right? Today... I've got um, a, a rather marvellous article from the Daily Skeptic uh, from um, the redoubtable Caroline Fisk. Now, if you're not familiar with Caroline Fisk, go and follow her. Uh, I put the links to the article in the Dubris. Caroline is on Twitter. Uh, and uh, yeah, I've met Caroline. She's marvellous. Hello, Caroline. How, how are you doing? I hope you're well and everything's going OK for you. But it's a very interesting piece that Caroline has managed to unearth about something that happened a few months back in June. Do you remember there was... Um, a hospital, right, or uh, King's College NHS it was, effectively, who plastered this massive revolting progress sign um, all over one of their buildings, right? It just suddenly appeared out of nowhere, right? And somebody said to me, photographed it, went, have you seen this? Well, like, oh, my God. Now, I don't know about you, but I can say this myself, that this is true. I do get the most extraordinarily, extraordinarily, extraordinary, oh, for God's sake, I do get this extraordinary, extraordinary reaction to seeing this bloody thing now. Every time I see the progress flag, it makes my stomach flip-flop. You know, I just see it as a, 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 a symbol of oppression and madness, anti-science, anti, you know, anti the whole damn thing. So, bearing with me on this one, here's what Caroline has been up to and what she's discovered. Um, it's called the EDI industry out of control. I mean, does, we don't, does anybody need to tell us that now? I think we know that they're out of control. They're completely insane, for goodness sake. And in June of this year, um, more than two people, as Caroline is saying here, looked with bemusement at King's College NHS announcement that it installed a permanent display of the gender ideology flag on one of its buildings, right? This wasn't a small thing, mind. This was huge. I mean, huge, a huge imposition, um, like the sort of thing you'd see in some Banana Republic, right? So they put it up and then they posted, delighted to officially open the new connecting link bridge at the uh, PRUH today. A br the bridge proudly features a large reproduction of the intersex inclusive pride flag designed and unveiled by, and then they've got the tweet of the person that designed and unveiled it, Valentino Vecchietti, apparently. Who cares, right? Um, I was bemused, and it's Caroline's picked up on the bemusement of others, because obviously other people were very bemused by it. Uh, bemused for three reasons, says Caroline. Gender ideology is a harmful pseudoscience. It posits that we have all have an inner gender identity around which is reasonable to align our bodies by hormonal and surgical interventions, which are irreversible and cause lifelong harm. Now, how can an actual NHS trust complacently endorse this? Right. Amen. Oh, That's how they do it. Amen. Oh, well, the NHS is cash strapped is the second the second level of bemusement, right? Is that the NHS is cash strapped? Why is it spending money on promoting harmful ideology? I mean it's a very reasonable question for anybody to ask, isn't it? Let's be honest. Reasonable question. And finally, flags matter. We should want to take them seriously. There are regulations around their display on public bu on public buildings. King's College NHS effectively flouts these regulations. It's a painting of a flag, but it loudly does what the flags do. Brackets, not brackets, speech marks. This is what we stand for. This is what this flag is saying. So what Caroline was interested in discovering is what internal process led to such a prominent and public commitment to pseudoscience from an NHS trust. What conversation took place? What money was spent? Does anyone dare object? Caroline says, I decided to find out using the FOI process, for those of you not in the know, that's the Freedom of Information process, which means you can get information from public bodies, which of course this is, a public body. Firstly, the painting of the flag cost a paltry sum in the scale of NHS spending. What is most depressing about this Freedom of Information response from King's College NHS, apart from the lackadaisical not doing the maths, is the EDI speak that comes with it. So it's couched in the linguistics and language of this cult speaking group of people. So number one, question one, what do I want? Caroline says to herself and then has to ask the question. If you don't get your FOI right, you don't get the answer you want because they'll obviously obfuscate if they can. Number one, please could you provide me with the budget that was allocated and used in the painting of the flag and mural pitched here? Give it, showing the picture and then asking how much. 
to communicate our, our equipment to, to communicate our commitment to equality, diversity, and inclusion. King's College Hospital NHS Foundation Trust supported a display of artwork showing the intersex inclusive flag at Princess Royal University Hospital as part of a new walk bridge for patients and staff, which was officially opened in May. Raw materials two thousand eight hundred eight pound, and installation one thousand four hundred four hundred pound of the artwork were funded at a total of cost of £3,208. That was the answer to the first question that Karen asked. Secondly, Caroline asked, who was consulted? The answer is just the EDI team. That was, that was it. In fact, if you think about it, why would you bother to consult people when their freedom of speech has already been stifled? You wouldn't do it, would you? Who wants to be accused of hate or phobia? Only one reason, only one response is allowed anyway. But the NHS Trust was possibly a bit embarrassed about this obvious truth, so it initially implied to me that there was a wider consultation and enthusiasm. It firstly said the following. Karen asked the question, please let me know what groups were consulted. It then said, the viewpoints of our Equality, Diversity and Inclusion team network representatives were taken and supported by our Director of Equality, Diversity and Inclusion these were then further supported by elected members of the local authority planning committee. There is an interesting take. We, we, yeah, we, we talked to the planning committee and they said it's OK. But when I could, Caroline, Caroline continues, but when I consulted members of the local authority, they responded with this. Unfortunately, the recent monstrosity at Bromley Hospital sat completely beyond Bromley Council's remit to control or prevent. We were not party to it in any way. And the planning process, which is set on rigid guidelines as to what people can and cannot do, had no means of denying the NHS the ability to erect it either. <laughs> so, that was from the council's chief planner. Um, what comes next, sorry, it's from the director's chief, the, the council's chief planner. Uh, dear leader, I think the response from the trust isn't quite correct. The display of the mural was not part of this application. Murals can require advertisement consent and not planning permission if they are considered to cons constitute an advertisement. The elevation show showed rainbow colouring on the building, but there was no application for advertisement consent for the mural, and it was not considered in the grant of planning permission. I would not say that the council had granted planning approval for this mural, and if, I, if, if it did need consent, I should add that I'm not convinced it does, brackets, close brackets, it would require adver advertisement consent and not planning permission. Even if an application for an advertisement consent had been submitted for the mural, the content of an advertisement is not something that the council can control. I hope this helps. Regards. Right? <laughs> oh, what a tangled web we weave when we practice to deceive. Did the King's College NHS EDI team actually make something up in its first response? It must have known that planning permission wasn't needed. This is another problem with gender ideology. It corrodes basic standards in organisations. So they, were, they felt quite happily that they could lie about it. That's extraordinary. That's, that's extraordinary, folks, isn't it? So then Caroline, being a bit of a pit bull, right, goes to, in a kind and nice pit bull way. Caroline, right. I asked for I asked for any email exchanges that related to the planning of the flag mural discussed below. You have not responded with any. But at point three, you say that the viewpoints of our Equality, Diversity and Inclusion Trust network representatives were taken and supported by our Director of Equality, Diversity and Inclusion. Caroline asks, in, again, a very good question. Please, can you provide me with the emails sent either to or from the Equality, Diversity and Inclusion Trust Network? All these words, isn't it? Representatives of which discuss the, from the representatives of the network, which discuss the potential display of this artwork, showing the intersex inclusive flag at Princess Royal University Hospital as part of a new walk bridge for patients and staff. If not emails, other documents discussing this proposal. There must be something, says Caroline. There must be something somewhere. There's a smoking gun. Where is it? And finally, Caroline got a result, and it's quite extraordinary. And here below, finally, is the result. Here is how you get an NHS trust to permanently display its commitment to pseudoscience. Brackets. Although I note that there were also several unrecorded MS Teams meetings where the artwork and schemes were discussed and approval was given. And we then have this email which has been given from the Freedom of Information request to Caroline and it says as follows. Thanks. That's what it says. Right. Subject relink bridge. Lots of it's blanked out. Thanks. Really glad to see that this has now been successfully incorporated into the design. We will discuss and come back with suggestions. When do you need to hear back from us? And then gents, can we pick this up on our 2-1 or team meeting? Which is obviously a kind of meeting, the 2-1's kind of meeting. Kind regards to the Director of Equality, Diversity and in Inclusion, King's College West 
uh, Hospital NHS Foundation Trust. This was followed up by another email. Dear all, hope all well. I thought you'd like to know that subject to fi final financing, our estates lead has secured the attached design to be part of the link bridge development in the, P to the PRUH site. This important structure links the main PFI site to the DSU building, and I think the design team has a super job. Has done, I imagine, a super job with the available space to make the most of the look a bit to Q plus colours. I don't think we have plans yet as for its opening, but any suggestions are greatly received. All the best. That's it, says Caroline, to get a large and permanent display of commitment to pseudoscience from an NHS trust requires two emails between gents. Thanks. Mates. All right. That's extraordinary. That's extraordinary. What Caroline then does in this excellent article, which I do recommend that you go and read, is then ask the question, how to solve this problem? How do we get rid of this nonsense? How to solve it? And offer some suggestions about what's going on, as well as an explanation of the kind of work that King's College NHS is doing, which is mirrored in all sorts of organisations and all sorts of places across the country. Um, Caroline, it's a tremendous piece. Thank you so much to you and the Daily Skeptic. The link is in the Dubris. Go and have a look. Come and be a warrior teacher. I'll see you lot later. Have a grand day. <laughs>